My guest today is Sonia Christensen. Sonia had a near-death experience when she was just 12 years old. She's written a book called Journey of the Star Children Through Time that is available on Amazon. Thank you so much for joining us, Sonia. I'm honored to have you as my guest. Thank you so much for asking me. I, I just so appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it as well. So you had a near-death experience when you were just a young child. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it was a long time ago. I was around 12 and I'm quite vintage now. But um, we went to a lake to visit some friends. We have a large family. I've got like 13 brothers and sisters. I'm the oldest. So it was rare to do that. So we're all excited. One of the things my parents did, my father would throw us in the water because their idea, they're both good swimmers, that you just got to learn to do it. And there were no swimming lessons and stuff back then. So he would pick us up and throw us into the water, you know, and we'd cannonball in. And it was great fun. And um, when my turn came, it was, well, I, I'd been thrown in several times, but this particular time I hit the water wrong. I hit it flat on my back. And this was like, a grown man who was a good swimmer and he had a lot of strength. So I, every ounce of air came out of my lungs and I sunk like a rock and I went way down. And it's like, at first I was, I was thrashing. I was thrashing just like anybody would thinking, Oh crap, I'm going to die. And then I heard a voice and it was the most beautiful. I can only think angelic but I don't really know how to describe that, but I've never heard anything like it. And said, stop thrashing, stop thrashing, stop shut, just stop thrashing. In just a very calm, peaceful way, just like you would say, isn't that flower pretty? I mean, just so matter of fact, stop thrashing. And I didn't, I just kept doing it. And she finally said, stop thrashing. Okay, I will. And I did. And then the water changed from black, dark, deep, muddy water to this most beautiful pale green. It just, I can't even describe it. And I could see water bubbles on the plants as deep down as we were, but they looked like little diamonds. And when I looked up, I could only see a faint glow of the sun, just creeping through the water so gently and the water was moving and it was like you could see a wave or a curtain moving back and forth in the water and I could see fishes little ones and they were gobbling air bubbles even though I know they breathe through their gills but the voice kept saying calm be calm you're okay you're okay in the most peaceful voice and she said that as long as I continue to try, I will be successful in my life. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The fear is what will stop you. And I was just so relaxed. I could have fallen asleep right there. It was so beautiful and so peaceful. I can't describe it. All of a sudden, this thing bit my arm. And I was dragged to the surface. It was my father. He jumped in. So I know it couldn't have been a long time in reality. But to me, it was hours. It could have been days. It was so peaceful. And the next thing I knew, I felt like I hit the side of a brick wall. They were doing CPR and it hurt. And it just, and I threw up and it, it was awful. I would just as soon go back down into the water. But the voice, I never forgot it. It was so amazing and beautiful. And I have never, ever been afraid of death since then. I have been with many people. I, I have been in the nursing field and I do holistic work. And I have been with people as they were passing. And they're so afraid. But I can tell them, don't be afraid. No matter what you've learned through humankind, in the way to believe or what the family and community teach you, no, there is nothing to be afraid of. 
It is love. It's pure love. And I can't forget it. It's so beautiful. And that's my message. Don't ever be afraid. No matter what you've learned in the faith you have with the people you know and love you, they're not always right. There is a creator. That creator touches everything and everyone, no matter what name you use, no matter what rituals you do, there is always deep love. And I never forgot that. And that's my experience. And that's what it did for me. Don't ever be afraid. You have had such a beautiful experience. It sounds like it was almost like um, going on vacation or, you know, <laughs> just being very calm and at ease. Um, we live in such a stressful time right now that it sounds like it was a, a great repose from the day to day living. Actually, when you were um, under the water and you were hearing this voice, did you recognize the voice at all? No, just beautiful and loving. Like I had never heard before. It touched my heart and soul like I cannot describe. Do you have time for another piece? I another little something? Yes. Okay. Sure. This, this experience happened to me yesterday. Now, I tend to see things and experience things out of body. And that's part of my book to tell you about those things. I have a family member who is very ill and notified me recently that they had only a short time and they live at the, a different end of the country and I cannot go see them. Now, this person is very stoic and doesn't believe my foo-foo stuff. That's what he calls it is my foo-foo stuff. But I was talking to a friend online who was a firefighter in New York. And he said, we were having a conversation and he said, God who helps those who help themselves. And it's like, what? I have not heard that term in years. My father used to say that God helps those who help themselves. And then one day I was having a hard time in school because I am dyslexic and it screws me up sometimes. Um, he said, if you did your studies and paid attention in school and asked for help, you're helping yourself. So God would always be there for you, but you have to help yourself. You have to try. Okay, that was odd because my father always said that. Then there was a word he always used that I really didn't, I didn't know the meaning to, but every now and then I would ask him something when he didn't really want to answer me. And he would say, anti-establishment America, blah, blah. I can't even say it now. Anti-establishment, anti-establishment. Crap, I can't remember the word. I'm sorry. But I, I, I'd forgotten it. I hadn't heard it for years. Materialism. Anyway, I know what it means. I just can't say it. I was looking through a dictionary on my phone that I had never opened. And I just poked it by accident. And it opened up. And the word was there. And what it means that you are against establishment, especially changing the Church of England. And I only knew that because I just looked it up. And it's a word that's, you know, this long. And how, why would I hear a word like that? And that just so surprised me. And then one more thing happened. It's like my nephew said on Facebook, it would be really great if everybody posted a picture of their dad or the man that raised them. And I thought about that. Well, I don't even have a picture of my father. And that I blew it away. And then I heard a noise in my closet. And I thought, oh, rats, the cat got in there. So I got up and went and looked. Nothing. The noise came again. It was really loud this time, like a box fell on the floor or something. And I went in, I know this cat's not in here. And I looked and there was a box on the floor that I had put away a number of years ago. I had forgot what was in it. Oh, so I opened it and I rummaged around it and there was a little package and inside of it was a gold locket. Oh, I have it here. 
And um, inside of the locket, Harry in here, I'm trying to, was a picture of my father and me when I was two, when he adopted me. I haven't seen it for years. I never thought about it. I was able to send that and put it where he wanted it on Facebook. But I knew that there was a message for the family member that is so sick. And I was able to reach him and say, dad said, he will never leave you. He will always be there with you, not to worry. It's going to be okay. And he will never leave you. No matter what happens, he will never leave you. He will always be there. And that just, and that happened just today. Wow, that is miraculous, really and yeah. truly. Well, so, it shows spirits there. Yeah. Spirits always there. It's not in some faraway place and foo-foo stuff. Exactly, right here with us. So you would say the statement that we are eternal spiritual beings is true. We never die. No, we're energy. We are energy. And I teach basic physics in my classes. And I mean like kindergarten can understand it. I'm not a scientist. But we talk about energy and molecules and what science has discovered. And that it never, ne we never die. We just change form. And it's okay. And nobody's going to fry. And I truly believe that. I know people, many don't believe that, but I do because of just what things have happened in my life. And the book addresses that. The book talks about leaving your body and how I learned to do that. And my husband and I knew each other at 10. We met in a Bible study and we realized quickly that we did things other people didn't and we were punished for it. And then our parents separated and we never reconnected for 47 years. And when we got back together, I mean, the whole book tells our journey. And it come, we came back together 47 years later, we eventually married and we both worked in the healing arts field. And I know this probably looks weird because I'm not centered properly. But well, this whole phone thing drives me crazy. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. But it's like, that's what my book is about and that we never die. And it's not about religion. It's about faith and love. And there is a difference. There is a difference and uh, it's a big difference. And that's my whole goal of my channel is to get that message out that we never die, um, that we're eternal spiritual beings. And so it's it's beautiful to hear you say that and to know that your book is about that i would love to read your book do you feel like uh, because you have so many um or maybe that you haven't had so many but you you're sort of more open to the spiritual side um than a lot of people out there do you think that your near-death experience when you're 12 years old helped open you up to that spiritual side so there was a a better flow of information or energy yes because we were raised in many different religions i wasn't born here and when we came here my mother really wanted to fit in and so she tried a lot of different things and it was right after the war so there was just a lot of tension a lot of stuff going on a lot of belief systems in her family and different things and her father was a hands-on healer. So we grew up with the idea of some kind of energy, although it was really verboten to talk about it. So we never got the full Monty, so to speak. And having that drowning experience just opened up doors. And then meeting my husband at 10 years old and knowing that he also saw things and he also had abilities that adults thought were evil and we bonded. And even though we were separated for 47 years and did not know where the other one was, um, it was just the whole, the whole life was been amazing. And I teach basic classes and, um, and I do lectures and seminars about these things. So I'm available if anybody's interested. And how would my viewers reach you if they are interested? Well, my website is in focus. No, excuse me. That's my email. You could email me 
And if you do put your put your name in the first sentence or in the first thing, so I know it's a real person and not an ad or something. My email is in focus Sonia S O N J A, all one word at yahoo.com. And I check my mail about once a day. And you said you have a, a website as well. I have a website for my book. It is www the W thing, you know, HTTP, um, star children journey dot com. My husband and I, he, he passed four years ago and his nickname was Fuzz. So if I slip and call him Fuzz, you'll know it's who it is. Um, we had the ability as children to see fairies. And of course, nobody believed us, but we could see the we could see them. And I wrote a story for my um, grandchildren um, about it, um, about making uh, just adventures in the in the forest because we lived in the woods of Maine. I grew up in Maine, and I'm in Oklahoma right now. But we could see fairies, and I could share the stories with the younger kids. And I don't know if they ever really saw them or if they were pretending or thought I was crazy. I don't know. But we could see the little woods people, and I've always had wild animals come to me. I mean, I like I said, I grew up in the woods of Maine and I would have a sandwich or something and hand it out to the bear that was out there. I didn't know they would eat me because they never hurt me. And one time. Well, where I live in Oklahoma, we have people who are very sensitive that are connected to Bigfoot for real because they are multidimensional. They're not strange things that somebody made up. They are truly creative and real beings. And this woman grew up with her grandparents talking about them. And she always saw them growing up on their farm that they lived on and in the woods. I just kind of was thinking of Harry and the Hendersons. You know, I didn't think they were real. But one time I was in a very bad situation when I was a child and I was made to walk to a certain places in the woods and it was just, it was very abusive and bad. And I was coming home. I wasn't supposed to come home. I couldn't come home until I heard a certain signal. I decided I'm not staying here. I'm coming home. And I could feel the energy of some kind of being near me that I couldn't see. It was in the woods. I didn't feel afraid. I felt, okay, whatever this is, it's protecting me. And I got home okay. Years later, after I moved to Oklahoma, I met the people who are truly involved with Bigfoot for real. And when she told her story, I knew immediately that's what was in the woods in Maine protecting me, that I got home safely. Not protecting me from animals. I have never been hurt by an animal, even though I grew up hunting and fishing. And I know how to do that, but it was always properly done. And with 18 kids or whatever, we had 13 kids, we grew our own food and that's how we lived. But I never was afraid of wild animals. And most of them wouldn't come up to me, even if it was a deer. And birds would sometimes land on me and if I was even sitting in the front lawn. So, but those things show that we're connected. And if you have fear, it, ex it expresses itself. And everybody knows that. You walk into a room, you feel. What do you feel? You feel like, oh, this is a cool place to be. Or you feel like, I don't even know my feet be here. This is going to be a pain. Well, pay attention to what you're feeling because it's the energy of the group that you're feeling because it's fluid. And you know that yourself. When you're in a good mood and you're happy, the world is a pretty good place. When you're scared, if you can't pay the bill or somebody's sick or the kid is hurt, it, it just, your whole day is on edge because you have that fear and the worry and worry is fear. And the things is truly, I know the scriptures say, it's the outward does not matter, but that is truly true because your life, your belief, your power that is given to you by creator, however you feel that to be, is within you always, never leaves, never leaves. It's always there. It's a matter of how we adjust our minds, if whether we see it or feel it or not. That's a really good life lesson for 
I think everybody out there, I wish that we would have been taught things like that in school that, you know, we need to be aware of energy and use our instincts and, um, you know, separate ourselves from negative energies. It was a different time then. But when you look back in history and you look at some other cultures and you think about different healers and different yogis and that's what they do. They have learned that we have not, but it's still available always to us. We can learn it now. We have to remove some of the stuff that we have been taught about fear. I believe that the world is starting to wake up um, and they don't have a choice on. Yeah, and more and more people are are starting to realize that this is the true way to live, to to be in tune with yourself and to feel your own energy, um, and to know that our energy affects others, and others' energy affects us as well. Um, yeah. And I think it's an exciting time to be alive because you're right. I don't think we have a choice. It's the energy of the planet that's so, changing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, it is. Absolutely. And I hate to bring up science all the time, but science knows more than we think they know. And they're right on more than we think they are. And the weather is changing. The planet is changing. But it's not because what we do is the planet changes. And every so many thousands of years, it changes again. And I've done the research and I know it's not all the stuff they're saying it is. And all the political stuff going on, it's like um, the world is very different in reality, but we can make a difference by how we think. I love that so much. And Sonia, thank you so much for being my guest. I wish we had more time together um, because I think you're absolutely fascinating and full of wisdom. Um, And maybe we can get together again and do another one. But do you have any last words of wisdom for my viewers? Breathe. Breathe. When you're upset, when you're anxious, you don't breathe. Just breathe. If you're interested in any exercise, check out Qigong. It's gentle. It's easy. You can have fun with it. You can play with your kids with it. It's not serious. It doesn't have to be unless you want it to be. But it keeps you breathing and keeps all your energy moving. And keep your energy moving and it won't be stagnant. It'll you'll stay healthier. That's very good advice. Thank you and so it's much. Fun. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I said, and it's fun. It is fun. I've done Qigong. It's a lot of fun. You can actually start to feel the energy between your hands. And then you understand that it is real. And that's why things like Reiki work. I'm a Reiki master teacher. And that's part of the reason it works, because you're moving your energy and you believe it's really working. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Sonia. It was such an honor to have you. Thank you very much for being my guest. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Even though we got a rocky start on this thing, I'm ready to go again. (laughs) We made it happen. And now we know for the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. I do appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you. Have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. You too. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye.